good afternoon to everyone. Um, uh, we have with us online Ayla Cravey, uh, uh, Chief Sustainability Finance Advisor at the EIB in Luxembourg. We have. Uh, uh, hi, good afternoon. How are you? Good afternoon. Uh, we have, uh, we have uh, Carlos Martins, uh, who is uh, the portfolio manager of ESM, so the European Stability Mechanism. We have Edwin Jensen, who uh, is a, cons uh, a st uh, strategic consultant in sustainability with uh, Sustainable Growth Associates and part of the Natural Step uh, Network. He is based in Amsterdam, works in Germany. Uh, so, welcome to all of you. Uh, we are starting with, with, uh, with uh, this, this first block, uh, with these uh, speakers, is about uh, uh, the regulatory changes. There are, the EU <coughs> has, has raised the bar on sustainability with the new, uh, the new commission has raised the bar is you know, ra you know, raising the, the to bold goals and they are asking and they are of course introducing a lot of regulatory and policy changes. So it is go it's very important with all, all these experts to, to see, to understand what changes are these because people are a bit confused and to whom they apply, right? Big companies, small companies, etc. Investors. Well, thank you so much. Uh, thank you for, for watching. Uh, hi, Ayla. I'm sure you, you can hear us from, from Luxembourg. Uh, I think it's important to, to understand that regulation, uh, it's not uh, a result of a bureaucratic uh, intention to make people's life more complicated. Uh, it is a result of what we've been seeing in the last couple of years and the needs that were identified in the market. Uh, Basically, the title of this panel about regulatory pressure sounds a bit negative, let's put it that way. But in fact, regulation is a great opportunity and it will bring great and positive things for investors and for the clarity of the market. Uh, markets have been doing sustainable finance for quite a long time so far and has been to a large extent self-regulated. Self-regulation is good to a certain extent but then we start missing things like comparability, transparency, and it starts bringing things playing field. Uh, and this is exactly the purpose of, of the regulation. So the regulation uh, uh, pyramid, let's put it that way, started with some bricks uh, uh, regarding the non-financial uh, disclosure in which companies were uh, um, asked to bring out information about their ESG uh, indicators inside, inside the, uh, uh, the corporate side. And meanwhile, we start evolving. Uh, and of course, there's this big theme called EU taxonomy, which uh, is um, the solution that was presented uh, uh, by the European institution, by the European Commission, uh, to, uh, in an attempt to measure, to score, through a science-based approach, every single economic activity. Uh, and this is where we are now. The, the taxonomy is trying to put out all the criteria uh, necessary for anybody in the market, starting with companies, to measure their activities, to say how much those activities significantly contribute to one of the six uh, environmental objectives from the European Commission, and at the same time, how much they eventually do some harm to the other objectives. So this is an important step so that everybody knows where they are, everybody uses the same scale, and everybody measures from the same criteria. This is good. This is actually good. It's complex. It will cost a lot of money, mostly to corporates, to produce those reports. But at the end of the day, every investor, whether it is uh, an official public sector investor, retail investor, uh, or the big funds, they will have the same criteria, the same measurement tool. Also, the taxonomy allows to classify those uh, activities. So in a way, this is a breakthrough that um, poses a new challenge but helps 
passing from a self-regulated market to one that has some rules. And this can only be a good thing. At the end of the day, and, and I'll, 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 I'll stop here, at the end of the day, the investor will be able to choose. I will just stop here by saying that despite all these reports will become mandatory, and it's not mandatory, it's actually voluntary for each investor to choose whether they want to go greener or not. Thank you. Uh, Edwin, we, we don't have yet Ella back, I think. Uh, Edwin, uh, what is your perspective on this topic uh, of regulation? It seems, uh, as, you, as Carlos said, it seems a bit boring, but at the same time, it's, it's needed. Yeah, exactly. I, um, I think that in general, um, we see so many side effects uh, of business doing their thing. And some organizations have been voluntarily uh, reporting on their sustainability efforts. Uh, ESG was mentioned, environmental, social, and governance aspects. Um, there was no real standard for this. Uh, there, there's a bunch of methodologies and more and more standards that, that help uh, to, uh, for organizations to report. But it was not really comparable. So you saw a lot of uh, uh, financial products uh, being around uh, that you could invest in, you could, uh, you could have uh, bonds, you could have shares and all that kind of stuff. Invest in organizations and everyone could basically say, we are green or we're sustainable. Um, and of course, many of them were not. What this helps with is literally a taxonomy, as in uh, a breakdown, a hierarchy of what would be sustainable. And of course, this goes into a variety of topics. It's about climate, uh, climate mitigation, climate adaptation, and as we go as well about biodiversity, etc. And this is central, which I think the EU has also understood very well, because this taxonomy is at the center of reporting of companies, at the same time reporting of the financial institutes. So you have this whole ecosystem, basically, of the financial flows. And I think maybe one step that we need to take back as well. The EU started with the, the Green Deal. And the Green Deal was really to help Europe get ready for sustainability, but also to protect its citizens, to make sure that we are um, having healthier products, health, healthier organizations. Um, that's why they started with this. And some of the key aspects that needed to, uh, to be done was this taxonomy, as in, what are we talking about when we talk about sustainability? What activities um, are contributing a lot to, for example, this climate change or biodiversity loss? And uh, what should they actually be reporting about? So quite a lot of the standards that were available before um, they, they asked organizations um, to choose and pick from a list of topics that they wanted to report about. Now, that is going to change because, of course, the much used example of airliners, you know, talking a lot about double sided printing, that's not going to help. Right? We, we need them to talk about what is really material, what's really significant for that particular activity. And I think that is what the set of regulations or directives um, are really helping with. Um, Ayla, maybe now we have better conditions. I see that you moved to, to maybe a, a mobile device or something. You are more vertical. Yes, yes. Oh, very good. Yes, is the sound better now? Yes, much better. Much okay, much better. great. So, let's have a bit... Uh, a, a summary of your pitch and we need to confess that it was very very difficult to understand because it was cutting all the time yes yes i'm sorry about that i mean uh, now i missed the, almost 90 percent of what what the two two uh, uh, colleagues there said um is this a bad line again no oh, sorry no okay yes, is, is the sound bad again it's okay huh? it's okay Okay, so I was just uh, trying to recap, and now I, I don't know if this is uh, repeating what what the, what the other speaker said, but um, I think there's there's one has to understand also with the, with these uh, different uh, reporting requirements. Um, I'm hearing myself, but okay. Um, 
that there, there is some which is giving advice and then there's some, something which is reporting which is mandatory for some and it is uh, voluntary for some. Um, the mandatory part is, is uh, also, I think there's a big, big confusion what I have seen is that people think that, for example, the reporting on, let's say, on the taxonomy alignment of your business, that if you are not in, then you are somebody who is bad or brown. And this is, of course, the biggest confusion of everything, because uh, there are some businesses for who this greenness or not is not even relevant. Let's take a law firm or an accounting firm. They can't be very green because their business is neutral. So uh, if you are not in the green part, don't worry. You should worry only if you are doing, let's say, if you are utility uh, or somebody whose business is, for the most part, taxonomy relevant. The term that the regulation uses is taxonomy uh, eligible. But I'm using relevant because I think it's more, uh, it's more demonstrative. Um, so that that is that is one thing. And then um, uh, in the even in the reporting frameworks, we have got a lot of exclusions, which makes everything look pretty insignificant. I would say, uh, because for example, for banks and investors, uh, financial uh, uh, actors. Uh, so much is excluded from what is being reported. Public sector, you have uh, SMEs, most of, uh, well, non-EU, uh, which most investor or banks at least have in their balance sheet quite a lot of. Um, so uh, I think it will take some time before this will actually get a home run in the sense that it starts to be something which is informative. And I think Commission itself has been a bit surprised by the first reports that numbers look very small. I'm not very surprised because this is what what we were expecting, um, with especially with the exclusions. So I would not. I would just say that nobody should panic at this stage. Nobody will look particularly good at this stage, given the circumstances. And there's plenty to understand. And and uh, also, what is not ideal right now in this situation is that we have the taxonomy regulation. Then there is the CSRD uh, for corporates. There's SFRD for financial market participants. And these are not all compatible, so there is much more work to do to make them compatible with each other. Terminology is not even the same, and some of them do not, for example, accept estimates or proxies. Some others do uh, not ideal. So um, patience, and let's take this as a, as a sort of work in progress and a learning process, because that is what it is. It, the work has just started. I mean, the first uh, regulations entered into force only a very short time ago, so let's not panic yet. And I would say, somebody mentioned the ESG reporting and ESG, whether something is ESG or not. I think it's easy to say that you're ESG because everybody can find their own definition for that. And this is a problem. ESG is not the problem. The problem is that you can mean 27 or actually more, 270 different things by being ESG. Um, so that word actually does not mean anything. I don't even like to use it because it does not mean much. Um, but uh, maybe maybe um, there's not time to go further into that uh, at, at this moment. Thank you. Thank you, Ella. Thank you. Um, so, what we are hearing is that uh, it is a progressive process. It is not something that is implemented fully uh, from one day to the other. Uh, it is a move uh, towards transparency what I heard from Carlos, and uh, so it's, uh, it's, there is a whole construction that will be you know, progressive. Uh, will this be enough to, to meet the targets? Because uh, if we think a bit, uh, as you say, there is a lot of ex exclusions, a lot of exceptions. Uh, we are moving towards 2030, bo bold targets. Can, can this regulation be really supportive of getting there? No, I think it will be, and I think I have been operating in this um, green finance, green bond market. I'm sorry, I hear this horrible noise all the time. Uh, and people have been asking all the time, what is really green? Who decides what is green? So to me, this taxonomy and those de definitions are really important and really helpful. When we take the taxonomy as a guidance as to what is actually making this substantial contribution, because that is what it, what it is meant to define. And uh, so for those who are looking for answers for that question, what is really green, the taxonomy does give that answer. And I think it's going to be helpful. It should be used by 
not only by private sector like corporates, but it should be used also by governments, by by the public sector, by the municipalities, when they decide on their investment programs, what they are going to uh, put their money to. They should look at the criteria that the taxonomy defines, just as a free consultant in a way. So to me, this is really, this can move the needle and, and used uh, properly, it, it should move the needle definitely. I know, Ella, many times that you have uh, some deadline on your side. So if you need to, yes. leave, please leave. Uh, I will yeah. go to, to, to Carlos, and thanks a lot for yes. your contributions. Yes, thanks. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 So, uh, Carlos, uh, same, same question, now to you. I think it's important not to lose the focus and where we started from. Uh, the regulation, as I was saying, it is a, a nudge, an incentive to promote the change. At the same time, this is a result of a drive, a policy change at the core of the European Union to promote and to channel funds towards greener projects. Taxonomy particularly is more focused on environmental sides. Let's, let's be clear on that. The social component will eventually be developed as well. Eventually, we'll have a social taxonomy. Right now, this is very focused on, on, on the green side. And, and with that, I would just like to uh, think exactly the, the point where, where Ayla uh, uh, stopped. Just imagine that every single European fund, every single um, flow of uh, funds from the European Union to a country or through the EIB to, uh, to a company will have to comply with a taxonomy uh, alignment criteria. That's a big change. That will allow to drive a lot of funds towards green initiatives and will reduce it to a large extent the discretionary of decision makers, whether they put in green or not. So that's just one point. Second point is in the private sector. The private sector is willing to embark into this change. We have been seeing that throughout the last 10, 20 years, particularly the last five years. There is a clear demand for green products, for ESG-related products, for sustainability-related products. In particular, there are a lot of pension funds that only accept to invest into some parts of uh, the market that comply with very explicit criteria. So the regulation, in my view, will produce some results. Are the results enough for what we need? That probably is the results of several pressures that we will assist. The pressure to go slower from a lot of uh, agents on the private sector, the pressure to go faster from a lot of NGOs, and the pressure of doing that in a way that will not damage socially uh, a lot of the constituents of the politicians. So the results of these three pressures, it's what we have. So politics, as a lot of people say, is the result of the possible, is the art of the possible. And I think this is what we have now. It's a realistic approach that is deployed. It's here and it's significantly better than what we had three years ago. So I'm, I'm quite positive. Uh, thank you, Carlos. Uh, Edwin, I want to put the question to you in a bit different way. You are uh, a system thinker uh, that studies deeply sustainability. You work with, 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 like me, with leaders of businesses. I would like your, your opinion on how do you see this? Because, in a way, uh, Carlos was saying, the taxonomy is environmental, basically. There is the social is missing. Not entirely. Let, let, Not let, let, let me yeah, be very specific. So the taxonomy has a significant contribution to one environmental objectives. It should not, the activity should not do any significant harm to the other objectives. But there's a third point, which is called the minimum safeguards. So any of these activities must contribute positively to, to one of the criteria, must not harm the others, and at the same time, they must comply with these minimum safeguards, which are basically human rights and socially related criteria. Sorry for the interrupting that question. Okay. That's, that's a good clarification. But I was, what I was saying is, uh, even, you know, the, what is called the, the, you know, what I call the Olympic circles, in which we have 
you know, we have a business, environment, and in social, interconnecting a bit. Uh, in, in, in that context, uh, typically there is like a list, a checklist of uh, environmental things. There is like a checklist of social things, even if it was complete. Then you have the, the business topics. Uh, this to me, you know, having, having you study deeply sustainability, people, you know, s scientists explain that uh, we need to, to think about the economic activity within, to fully within social, in the economic and social fully within environment. So that is like what is called nested circles. And it's like the boundaries around all the business. How, how do you see, you know, this, uh, this uh, ESG, it's not only the regulation, it's the ESG uh, talk versus the, 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 the nested circles, the, the, the mm -hmm. system value, let's call it. Yeah. Well, currently with the, the taxonomy is talking about the ecological side at the moment, uh, but there's the regulation and then you have annexes. In other words, it's a, um, extra deep information on specific topics. And they started with climate. Uh, biodiversity and several other ecological topics are following. You may remember from the media, or at least some of you, that nuclear was a debate uh, or natural gas was a debate. They took that out of the first two and they put that into another annex. The social topics will also be put somewhere else. With regards to governance, uh, as part of ESG, um, there's also uh, the due diligence regulations uh, around this. So uh, a company that is doing business within and outside of the EU with an entire value chain up until Indonesia or, or wherever other country, they should not do harm there either. Uh, that's, that's another part of the law. And if you then are turning towards reporting, uh, talking about what you actually do, you now need to start reporting about the environmental aspects according to the taxonomy in a, to a particular degree. You need to report about the social um, impacts that you have um, and that the social impacts may have on you, right? Because this is all about double materiality. I'll, I'll get back to that in a moment. And then there's this governance topic, right? How are you managing within your organization and how are you steering all these different topics? Now, the interesting thing is that with the new um, environmental uh, sustainability reporting standards that are going to be there as well, it's not just reporting about how many um, kilotons of CO2 do you emit, because that doesn't say that much. It's actually what are you emitting? What are you doing about it? What have you been doing in the past and in the future to meet the Paris Agreement? Uh, and, and those additional topics that are being requested from all these organizations, that's where um, the rubber hits, hits the road. That's where it becomes important. And that's also where I, I just heard the term of gradually introducing. Well, that's in one way that's true. On the other hand, there will be a particular moment in time in the next few years, when you have to be compliant. That means that your organization at that date needs to have a report out. And of course, there will be some flexibility, some leniency in the beginning. Now, you won't need to provide third-party validation yet from, from assurance providers, yeah, from the accountants, from the uh, auditors. Um, but for sure, this will happen, and you better start as soon as possible. Um, so from a sustainability point of view, we are getting much closer. So before we were talking, when we were talking about maturity levels of organizations, you had the pioneers like the Patagonias of this world. Um, and the lowest level was basically compliance or even pre-compliance. You have several stages in between. What's happening now is that those organizations that have been a little bit more proactive or that have been voluntary reporting or that have been working on sustainability, even they are now being confronted with quite a lot of difficult questions from an ESG perspective on what they need to report on. They need to get their act together. So all of a sudden, this minimum line of what they need to start talking about, need to start measuring, need to start arranging for, that line goes up, becomes more difficult. And I think that that is good overall for us as consumers, for us as uh, parts of society, 
um, but also for us as, um, uh, as customers of other businesses. Uh, also for us as suppliers into other businesses and value chains uh, to, to end up with, with good products that we can trust. Because I think one important thing um, that has been declining over time, and we, see, we still see that happening, is a degradation of trust. Uh, we see that uh, towards our leaders, whether it's in business or in politics, we see that in athletics, we see that in, uh, in law. Trust is declining. And this helps to, at least for part, regain that trust again. Um, I would uh, uh, stop uh, it here because we have a forum that goes on. That goes on. We started late, so we, we, if we recover five minutes in each block, we can get more near to the to the end. So thanks a lot. Any any. Just a final remark, if I may. Uh, the taxonomy in Europe is a product of the European Union. It is one of the most, if, if not the most, advanced techno taxonomies in the world. There are other countries trying to put on their own taxonomies, and they are following the European uh, template. So that should make us proud of being European. Thank you. Many, many thanks. That is important to, to, to see that we are also in that regard, we are trying to lead the world. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.